Hello and welcome to chapter 4.2 from the Introduction to Statistics Think and Do book. This chapter is on conditional probability and we'll get right into it here but let me first go into full screen mode. Alright, a conditional probability is a probability that is calculated under some given assumption. We'll get into some details in a second. But here's the notation. This is the probability of B, and this little line here says given A. The probability of B given A. And it's the probability that B occurs assuming that A has occurred. And we'll do this, the first set of examples B with, um, with respect to playing cards. So we'll go into this briefly. Um, but if not, you can Google or look around for what, for what, a, what a deck of cards looks like. But the important things are there are 52 of them. There are four suits. The suits are hearts, diamonds, spades, and clubs. And each suit contains 13 cards. They are 2 through 10. Those are the numbers. Um, and so since starting at 2, that's 9. And then four face cards. Um, Jack, queen, king, ace. Actually, I don't know if the ace is considered a face card or not. And for some reason it gets put at the end, but it's sort of like the one. But it's so special that it's called an ace. Um, okay, so that sort of gets us started for our conditional probabilities, right? Where we're up here and we're calculating the probability of B given A. So, going to our first example. Suppose you pick one card from a deck. What is the probability that it is a jack given that it is a heart? So what we're saying is, I'm telling you, it is a heart. Since there are only 13 hearts, and of those 13 hearts, only one is a jack, the probability of getting a jack, given that it's a heart, is 1 out of 13. Right. But notice, if you swing that around, I want you to find over here what's the probability of getting a heart given that it's a jack. Well, here's the idea. If you look at jacks, I'm telling you it's a jack. There's only four jacks. And of those four jacks, only one is a heart. So it's one out of four, 0.25. Now we'll get into picking uh, two cards. We're going to pick two cards from our deck without replacement. That means you know, after I take the first, I'm going to hold on to it and keep it, and I'm going to pick a second. So, I want to find the probability that the second card is a jack, given that the first card is a jack. In other words, I want the probability that I get a jack on the second, given that I got a jack on the first. Right? And so, here's the idea. If I know, you know, I start off with four jacks in the deck. But I picked one the first time, and so and I'm holding it before I go to draw that second one. So, so that's out. So I now know there's only three jacks left, but I'm also holding a card, so the total number of cards is 51 instead of 52. So that's how many jacks are left. That's how many cards are left. 3 over 51.0588. Now suppose you pick two cards without replacement. Again, that means you pick the card, don't put it back, and pick another. What is the probability the second card is a jack, given that the first card was a queen? So I'm finding what's the probability of getting a jack on the second, given you got a queen on the first. Well, again, since you're holding a queen, there's only 51 cards left. Uh, but since you're holding a queen, there must still be four jacks. All right, so 4 out of 51, or 0.784. Now we get into um, problem 5 here, where we're picking a, uh, two cards with replacement. That means, you know, I take a card, look at it, and then I put it back in, reshuffle the deck, and pick another card. And I ask, what is the probability that the second card is a jack, given that the first card is a jack? So here's the probability that I get a jack on the second, given that I got a jack on the first. 
right? And we did this before. We did that right up here, number three. Only that was without replacement. All right now I'm talking about with replacement. And we're going to see that that probability changes. Okay, so if you look at this, okay, so we got a jack on the first, but then we put it back in, reshuffled, so there's still 52 cards. And since you took that first jack and put it back, there's still four left. So there's actually four out of 52, which is 0.0769. Compared to the case where we had no replacement, you do have a better chance of getting two jacks if you uh, replace the cards. Right. Okay, so moving right along, an example from medicine. It's where you can test, um, say, any sort of device that comes back positive or negative. In this case, we'll we'll look at a cancer screening device. And the way we test this device is we're going to send uh, 400 people to be um, tested by this device. And in the column here, we'll say, did the, did, the, did the person actually have cancer? So we're gonna send 400 people, not, not 400 people, uh, 200 people through the machine that do have cancer, and 200 that do not, right? And then we're gonna see how the machine does, right? And so, if you look, these are the all the patients that tested positive of the 200 patients that did have cancer, 198 tested positive, two tested negative. So that's bad, right? That's bad. And then of the 200 people that did not have cancer, um, 180 came back negative, right? So negative means no cancer is present. And, but 20 came back positive. Right, so that's bad. So notice we have two different kinds of bads, right? A positive result on somebody without cancer and a negative result on somebody with cancer. So let's look at some conditional probabilities. Find the probability that the, the device tests positive on a person without cancer. Right, so I'm assuming that the person has no cancer. So what that means is I'm not dealing with all 400 anymore. I'm dealing with just these 200. So that probability, 20 tested positive out of the 200 that had no cancer, 0 0.10 or 10%. Right. On the your term problem, I say what's the probability that I get a negative test on a person with cancer? Right. So I want the probability of a negative test given the person has cancer. So again, we go back to our table here, and there's only 200 under the category of did have cancer. So there's 200 there, and two came back negative. So two out of 200, or one percent. So what do these two probabilities tell us about the machine? You know, the machine can be sent, said to be very, very sensitive or not very sensitive. And the more sensitive you you make it. Um, you know, you'll, fewer um, people with cancer will get diagnosed without it, as not having it, but you'll get more people that don't have cancer that get um, false positives. So the way this is set up, if you look, this is a 10% chance of a false positive, but only a 1% chance of a false negative. So the machine is calibrated in such a way that there's a much greater chance of getting the false positive than the false negative. And, and that makes perfectly good sense because a false positive, while traumatizing and expensive, um, is not nearly as dangerous as a false. A false negative, you send somebody home um, telling them that there's no cancer when there really is. So this is a much, this is a, um, of the two errors, this is certainly the worst kind of error. And so you, st you set the machine so that this probability is much smaller than that machine. And you can sort of set, you know, you can, you can calibrate these things to be very sensitive or less sensitive. But it's hard to reduce the probability of this, of a false negative, without increasing the probability of a false positive. The popular mistake in medicine is to quote a probability when they should be using a um, conditional probability. 
And here's the idea. We'll assume that our, our machine up here, suppose, suppose there were 400 people that were um, suspected of having cancer. And so they were sent for the, for the for screening and that these actually come from screening results, right? Okay, so you get sent to have a cancer screening. You're, you're similar to that group that's, that's represented in our table here. Um, and we want to calculate the probability of getting a false positive. Well, from perspective one, what is the probability of getting a false positive before a patient goes in for a screening? Well, if it's before you even go in, if you look at that, the probability of a false positive, well, these are the false positives. There's 400. There's 20 out of 400. So that's the probability of a false positive. All right, so let's go back down there. All right, 20 out of 400, or 5%. So before you even go in, you have a 5% chance of a false positive. Now, what if you come back and, the, and you came back with a positive result, or the patient has a positive result? Now what's the probability that it is actually a false positive? If we go back up here, we know that we have a positive test result. Right? So we're in this row. The positive test results. So we sort of excluded all of the... Uh, the people that got negative test results. And here, what do we have? 218 total, all right? And of those 218, how many tested positive? Well, there, it's these 20, all right? So, these were the, sorry, these are the ones that tested positive that did not have cancer. So these are the 20 false positives of 218 positives. So you look at 20 out of 218, there, which is 0 0.092, but about 9%. Right. So we went from 5% to 9%. And then the common mistake made in medicine is that suppose you go in for a screening and the result comes back positive. The doctor will often say, that, I don't know if the doctor will often do it, but the error has been made that they will quote you this 5% chance of it being a false positive when in fact there's a much greater once you come back with that positive the probability of it being false goes up and and that can be you know here it went from 5% it almost doubled but it can get a lot worse than that depending on the scarcity of the disease um, so again that's that's a significant difference in um, a regular probability and a conditional probability. And I believe that wraps up conditional probabilities. We'll see you in the next chapter, which is chapter 4.3. All right.